Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Fino Field in Milford for state tournament action. It's Ashland Legion Baseball post 77 on HCAM television in Hopkinton, as well as WACA TV in Ashland. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan on camera for what should be a great matchup between post 77 and Braintree, the two undefeated teams left in the tournament. Both these teams are two and zero in state tournament play. Braintree is 17 and six overall. Ashland also 17 and six overall. As right now the lineups are being introduced. This is the only winner's bracket matchup left and the winner of this game will be back here at Fino Field tomorrow night. And depending on who wins this game, it'll determine who the opponent will be tomorrow night as well, as both teams will now get towards the middle of the field and hear the Legion Pledge as well as the National Anthem. Let's tune in to the public address announcer here at Fino Field in Milford. And there is the national anthem. We are just about ready for baseball between Ashland Post 77 and Braintree Post 86. Ashland and Braintree are two of the four teams left standing in the American Legion Baseball Tournament. The other two include Milford and Shrewsbury. Milford took down Northampton today to stay alive and advance to play another day and Shrewsbury was able to take down Newton, eliminating them from the tournament as Shrewsbury advances to play tomorrow as well. Who will play when? Well, that is to be found out. One thing we can tell you is Milford will be playing at 4.30 against an opponent to be determined, of course, based on this game. Let's take a look at the lineups. We'll start off with the away team, Braintree. And they are going to have Billy Sylvia, the right fielder, leading off. Alex Kennedy, the catcher, batting second. Sean Casey, the DH, batting third. Joe Vanelli, the first baseman, hitting cleanup. Cole Flannery, the left fielder, batting fifth. Steve Burns, the second baseman, batting sixth. Nolan Freeman, the third baseman, batting seventh. Justin Adams, the shortstop, batting eighth. Jackson Duffy, the center fielder, batting ninth. And the pitcher is John Teller. As for the Ashland Diamond, Let's take a look at 
Post 77's defense. Sean Babineau is today's pitcher. Sean Jouette behind home plate. Zach Pesson at first base. Ronan Bates, the second baseman. Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Lewis Rossi at third base. From left to right, Jake Obed, Brad Seymour, and Ben Thomas for game three for Post 77 of the state tournament, hoping for similar success as they have had the first two nights here at Fino Field. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on today's broadcast. Connor Donovan on camera. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV in Ashland and H-Camp Television in Hopkinton as I bring in my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Larry, Ashland, they got a night off uh, yesterday, as did everyone else in the state tournament, due to just a, a rain out. How much do you think that helps this post-77 pitching rotation? Well, Sean Babineau, uh, who's been on a pitch count all this year, but did pitch 91 pitches against Andover last Wednesday, is fully rested. He's their number one. Everybody would admit that. He works quickly. He gets into a rhythm. Uh, he's got a tremendous pickoff move if you've been watching Ashland Legion baseball all year. Uh, and I say if he gets into a groove, he's going to be a tough customer. I'm anxious to see Braintree. I've not scouted them, but they have a feeder system from the high school where they've been in the Elite Eight high school tournament for the last two out of three years. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. It should certainly be as Braintree defeated Shrewsbury and Northampton to get to the 2-0 mark and stay in the winner's bracket in the state tournament as the first pitch to the right fielder, Billy Sylvia, is just slightly outside, 1-0. Babineau delivers the second pitch of the game, and that one is low, 2-0 to the right fielder. Babineau has not pitched for post-77 in a while, but of course he is pitching uh, for another team as well throughout the summer. So he has had his fair share of experience, but it is a 3-0 count to start things off to the right fielder. Weather tonight starting to look a whole lot nicer than it did throughout much of the day as the sun starts to come out as there is a strike from Babineau. The HKM Weather Center reading at 60 degrees here at Fino Field with a small to no chance of precipitation as a swinging strike there fills up the count and Babineau has battled back. A nice cool night here at Fino Field. Heat certainly not an issue tonight as Sylvia will draw the walk. That pitch low and inside, so a leadoff walk to the right fielder. That'll bring up Alex Kennedy, the catcher. Post 77 defeated Somerset on Saturday, July 22nd, 16 to two, and Newton on July 23rd, Sunday, 10 to eight. And what was a miraculous game, a whole lot of fun to watch. Babineau deals, runner leading slightly off of first, that pitch outside, one and oh. Well. And Larry, you mentioned uh, Babineau's pickoff move, that's certainly something we'll be looking for tonight. They maybe have scouted him or talked to another coach about him. As that is fouled off up the left side. He should be in any event able to keep that run game to a bare minimum. I'm trying to keep track of how quickly he's throwing from the time he gets the ball back from the catcher. I bet you it's under 10 seconds. One and one to Kennedy. And the winner of this game will have an automatic bid to the state championship game. So this one is a big one. The two undefeated teams left standing in state tournament play, Braintree and Ashland. Runner leading off of first. Babineau already checked in once. That one's fouled beyond the backstop. And I think the... Uh Runner on first, Sylvia said, ooh, that was a little close. I might not be so greedy with my lead now. Well, I think that's something you learn pretty quickly with Babineau on the hill. As this is hit in the air, foul territory and out of play. A one and two count to the catcher. 
One on, no outs here in the top of the first. The lights starting to come on at Fino Field. As the sun begins to set. Runner leading off of first, the check in, and the runner is back safe. As soon as he saw Babineau even make the slightest motion towards first base, he was back. It was still a close play, though. It was. That one outside. Two Look. and two. And he tried to quick pitch him. But Babineau won't throw until the mound is right. Waits to sign and deals. Nasty breaking ball there. Gets Kennedy swinging. That had some nasty movement on it, Larry. Sure did. We see some friends here. We got Alex Reynolds, the Hopkins in the high school. Most valuable player. Tri-Valley, most valuable player. Playing for post-59. Came down to watch the game. There's a strike to Sean Casey, the DH. Babino working from the stretch. Takes a look at first. Runner taking off. Babino deals. The throw up is going to be slightly off the mark by Jouette. The runner gets the stolen base. Sylvia now at second. You know, Sean moved his head back and forth several times there. Usually it's sort of one look and he'll throw over. Runner leading off of second. There's a strike. One and two. Babineau takes a look at second and now deals. Breaking ball hit back to Babineau who will take a gander over at second. Throw to first, no problem. One to three goes Casey. Hey. He's just smooth operator. Certainly is. No panic whatsoever. Took a peek at second, threw it over to first, and didn't seem like he was under any pressure whatsoever. As Joe in Vanelli, the first baseman, steps in. And in between innings, if you're thinking about leaving your TV, you'll only take one or two warm-ups, and then just throw it down. So make your run to the refrigerator quick. Right. As this is hit in the air to left field and ranging over to make the catch, coming to a knee is Jake Obid. And that one was uh, moving around a bit up in the air, but Obid able to track it down for the third and final out of the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. We are scoreless between Ashland and Braintree on HCAM Television and WACA-TV. Bottom of the first inning, post 77 coming up to the plate for their first time this evening. Let's take a look at their lineup. It'll be Jake Obid, the left fielder, starting things off. Ronan Bates, the second baseman, batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, batting third. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, hitting cleanup. Zach Peston, the first baseman, batting fifth. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, batting sixth. Tom Onsi, the DH, batting seventh. Sean Jouette, the catcher, batting eighth. And Brad Seymour, the center fielder, rounding out the order. We'll take a look at the post-86 diamond. It is John Teller on the mound, Alex Kennedy, the catcher, Joe Vanelli at first base, Steve Burns at second base, Justin Adams the shortstop, Nolan Freeman at third base from left to right. It is Cole Flannery, Jackson Duffy, and Billy Sylvia for Braintree post-86. And the first pitch to Obid is just a little bit high, one and zero. Oh. Obid four for eight in state tournament action. That one outside. Here's our hero from Monday night. Threw 124 pitches in an absolutely tremendous effort. That one upstairs. That and he contributed heavily at the plate. Had that collision with Gately, the 200-plus pounder, draws a walk. 
who was 10 feet up the line receiving the throw, never had the ball, and Jake had to do his best to run into him, but he ran into a uh, freight train. No contest there. Yeah, and a nice walk drawn here as Ronan Bates steps in. Jake Obit has a 450 on base percentage throughout this season. Ronan Bates takes strike one. Bates at a 215 batting average. Has struggled a bit at the plate. Did it, was able to get a hit against Newton as the check in on Obit. He goes back to the bag. He's a much better hitter than 215. If he's going to break out tonight, it would be a great night to do it. Certainly would. Wind up and the pitch. Just up high. We get a great, great view from a press box that beats the third baseline at Ashley and Middle School. Set to deliver. Check in, runner back safe. Not a very good move by Tellier. Obid taking a lead once again. We know how these post-77 base runners like to get in the opposing team's head. As that one's fouled off. One and two. And as Coach Johnson always puts it, they like to create havoc on the base paths. They're not a big team at all compared to some of the teams I've seen down here. Northampton rolled in on a bus. They needed that bus. Newton, who lost this afternoon against Shrewsbury, had two kids that were easily 230 pounds each. A little bit leading once again. That one is just outside. Good take by Ronan. Two and two on Bates. Ronan does have a 338 on base percentage. He's drawn 10 walks throughout the course of the season. A little bit closer there, checking in on Obid. Teller working from the stretch. He deals. Good breaking ball is going to get Bates swinging. Obid back to the bag. On the throw down, he is safe. Good throw down the line by Kennedy. One away, one on, Jackson Horning to the plate. What do you think, Tom, a little hit and run action? It's possible. Right side of that infield is wide open. As Hornung will hit this one in the air towards left center and ranging over to make the catch is Jackson Duffy for the second out. Obid stays put at first. That'll bring up Ben Thomas, the cleanup man who has cleaned up in this state tournament. A 362 batting average overall, 493 on base percentage and he has swung the bat well as of recent. Was able to manage a nice hit against Newton and a walk as the check-in on Obid is back to the bag. And also struck multiple times in the victory over Somerset. Catcher looks like he's got a decent arm, set it up nice. And he will put this one in a left field. That's going to get down for a hit. And it is a two-out single for Ben Thomas. Obid up to second. It'll bring up Zach Pesson, the first baseman. Pesson at a 273 mark on the season, 458 on base percentage. 11 runs scored, four batted in. You got the Pest waiting on in the on deck circle, Lewis Rossi, Mr. Havoc himself. Right. He's been extremely good all around as of late. Line up and the pitch, and this is down the third base line, and that is foul. Oh, and one.
Teller from the stretch. Both runners leading off a bit. That one upstairs, one and one. That one's a tough one to take. Two outs, two on. Looks at second and deals. There's a called strike. One and two. Obid with a pretty big lead over at second, but Pesson will get caught swinging there for strike number three, and that'll wrap up the first inning. We are scoreless as we will head to the top of the second. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the second inning, Babineau set to deal. That one is low to Cole Flannery, the left fielder. A one and oh count. Lefty lefty matchup. Five, six, and seven. That's for foul Braintree. Away. Set to deal. Two and one. That one's slightly high. Babino working quickly as usual. That one low, three and one. Five, six, and seven due up for Braintree. Cole Flannery, Steve Burns, and Nolan Freeman. Up the middle, right back to Babino, who will walk it over to first base. A little flip, no problem. One to three for out number one. Steve Burns will step in, the second baseman. A lot of pitchers, as we saw in the Newton game, especially the Newton pitcher who airmailed it to first. And you run that risk when you're trying to throw it over to first all the way from the mound, Larry. Well, <laughs> Babineau did it right there. Just walk it over. Well, he did even better than that in the Andover game. He ran over with the ball. And I thought he was going to flip, and he just touched the bag right. ahead of the runner. Made him run a little bit. But maybe that was his ploy. The 0-2 up high. Waste pitch. No intention of making that a strike. Set to deliver. That one low. Ashley in defense looks very relaxed. They know they've got their number one out there. He deals. And this is hit in the left field. That's going to drop down for a one-out base hit. Burns over to first base for the first Braintree hit of the evening. That'll bring up Nolan Freeman, the third baseman. One out, one on. Babineau's already got the death stare on that runner over there. It's one of the things he told me about before the Andover game, if he doesn't like the guy. And this is up the middle to the shortstop, throw to second for one, and Bates turns and will have no play to first base, but they do get the force out, two away. That's they don't to seem four. to be hitting the ball all that hard against Sean. Well, it looked like kind of a half swing there by Freeman. Justin Adams will step in. Runner slightly leading off of first. Babineau deals. That one is low. Babineau doing a little manicuring in the mound. Runner thought about taking off, but Went back to first base. Maybe trying to uh, get a first-hand glimpse of Babineau's famous pickoff move. But Adams going to get caught looking. Runner does take off from first and gets the stolen base. One and one. Wind up and the pitch. Nasty breaking ball there, four strike two. As he 
fouls it into the backstop. Whole lot of curve on that one. We get a beautiful view of his breaking pitch. He throws a tight one, he throws a slow roller. Well, these Braintree hitters got to be doing a little bit of guessing during today's game. Wind up in the pitch, fouled away. One and two, one on, two outs. Shortstop Justin Adams awaits the next pitch. Babineau looks at second and deals. Grabs the inside corner of the plate. Ball gets away from the catcher. The throw to first is in time. Sean Jouette struggled a little bit to get a good grip on the ball and get the throw over to first. But he got it there just in time. And the Braintree coaching staff not in agreement. But in any case, that is the third out of the inning. To the bottom of the second we go. We are scoreless here at Fino Field. Bottom of the second inning, five, uh, six, seven, and eight do up for post 77. Lewis Rossi, Tom Otzi, and Sean Jouette to face John Teller. The uh, Braintree third base coach had a conversation with the first base umpire about that last play where Pedson jumped in the air and came back down on the bag on the throw from Jewett, but to no avail. Line up in the pitch to Rossi is strike one. Mr. Mayhem. He has had a good tournament, that's for sure. Set to deal. There's strike two. Ashland Post 77, of course, led by head coach Derek Johnson, team manager Richard Powell. That pitch just outside. One and two. Green Tree led by head coach Cam Fox, managed by Cam Fox as well, as this is going to be an out for Rossi. One away. I'll bring up Tom Otzi, the DH. Otzi hitting a 381 on the season, 21 at bats. Getting a whole lot of time in the outfield as of late. And of course, had a big start in game one of the state tournament where Ashland beat Somerset 16 to two. I forgot about that game. <laughs> <laughs> Set to deal. Up the left side, takes a hop on the grass and by the shortstop it goes. And that was just on the lip of the grass there and got by the shortstop. An awkward hop allows Ansi to reach with one out. I understand they, between the post and Milford Park and Rec, they spent about $150,000 on that new infield and it is haunted. Yeah, it certainly is. Especially when it gets towards the, towards the end of the grass line. By the Balls hit around yeah. there have just given these infielders a very hard time. Regardless of who's playing. Right. Sean Jouette steps in, checking at first. Runner is back safe. Jouette hitting a 263 overall, 391 on base percentage. Has scored 16, driven in 12. I love the way he competes. Take a look at that brain tree catcher. He's moving from side to side and trying to get his pitcher to aim right where he's setting up, which is the outside corner. Runner leading off of first. Jouette swings at a high one there, 0-2. As you know, catchers can make a big difference. They certainly can. I think uh, most successful teams they have a catcher that they can rely on, at least defensively. As this is hit up the middle, that'll drop into center field. That's a base hit. Ansi to second, Jouette to first, a one-out single. 
Well, I don't know if the Braintree coach is happy with that. The pitcher was not backing up third base of that ball that scooted by the third baseman. Onzi would have been on third. That one was a rope. Brad Seymour will step in. He had a good game against Newton. That he did. That defensive play to get the runner that did not quite tag up. Went back to the bag. Thought he had tagged. Threw to Ronan Bates. He got banged out. He also went one for two in that game with a pair of walks and a run scored. Wind up in the pitch. Called strike. Possesses excellent speed, so third baseman is playing a little bit uh, deep. Both runners leading off. There's another called strike, 0 2. Tellier is not overpowering, but he's hitting his spots. Yeah, right now he's aiming for the outside corner of the plate, and he's hitting his mark. That one on the inside corner fouled away. Barring a double play here, Jake Ilbid will have a chance to step in. Tellier facing the nine hitter and Seymour. Wind up and the pitch. Outside, good eye by Seymour. One and two. Post 77 would certainly love to get the top of the lineup up here with men on. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike. That'll get Seymour. Two away. Jake Obit to step in. Seymour was just able to foul tip that ball. Was right in the catcher's mitt, though. Obid hitting a 313 overall, a 450 on base percentage. Takes a breaking pitch slightly high, 1 0. Oh. Sometimes hitters will try and take a sneak peek back and see where the catcher is setting up. Teller deals. There's a called strike, 1 and 1. Well, so far, this game has the makings of a pretty good pitcher's matchup between John Teller and Sean Babineau. Down the third base side, picked up by the third baseman, throw to first, is going to be in time. Five to three goes Obid, and that'll wrap up the second inning. We will head to the third. It is scoreless between Ashland and Braintree. Top of the third inning, nine, one, and two due up for Braintree. Jackson Duffy, Billy Sylvia, and Alex Kennedy to face Sean Babineau, who so far today has struck out two, given up no runs and one hit. Sean Babineau throughout the season has thrown 19 and a third for post 77 and has a zero ERA, Deliver strike one there. That was a nine second in between pitch and catch. He certainly works, for, works fast, that's for sure. I think most of the games that he does pitch are over in about an hour. As this is hit in the right field, that'll drop down for a base hit. So far, Sean has had the first hitter of every inning on base. Billy Silva will step in. He walked in the first inning, I think. Wide up and the pitch. Breaking ball up high. Runner leading a bit off of first. Set to deliver the bunt, pulled back. He offered. Yep, it is a strike anyhow. Coach Matt Anderson from Northeast Baseball Academy, Matt Anderson is here to watch some of his prospects. 
Babineau checks in there, runner back safely. Burns not getting a huge lead off of, or excuse me, Duffy not getting a huge lead off of first. That is fouled away off the bunt, one and two. For a leadoff hitter, I'm sort of surprised he'd be laying down a bunt. Sylvia gets the sign from his coach and steps back into the batter's box. Babineau takes a peek at first. Runner taking off. Duet throws down, and that is going to go off the runner and roll towards third base. And the runner going to take advantage of the situation and head over to third base. And Duffy is aboard on the throw from Jouette that went off of him. And that is something you do not see a lot. It was a pretty good throw by Jouette, but just had to get that one slightly higher. Had to have hit the runner on the hip because that ball went 90 feet plus. It did, yeah. It took a big roll down towards third base. And Duffy showing off the wheels. So now, runner on third, no outs. Two and two. That one low. Full count now. We have not seen Babineau in a whole lot of situations with a runner on third and no outs. Up the third base side, picked up by Rossi, throw to first. Not a problem, runner will stay put at first. Way at to third. hold him, Lewis Rossi. Yeah, that was a great job by Rossi. Took a look over at Duffy, standing on the bag, and threw over. A nice fast one across the diamond, and no time for Duffy to try to advance. Alex Kennedy steps in. This is hit in the air to center field, and it is right at Seymour, who's going to throw in, but it is going to be cut off, and the first run of the game will score. Jackson Duffy comes around to score on the sacrifice RBI from Kennedy. So that throw down the second looms large in this inning. And that is the first run that Sean Babineau has given up all season for post 77. Sean Casey steps in and takes a strike. The DH grounded out his last time up. Babino deals, fouled off. Braintree will be facing two, three, and four hitters when they take the field. Set to deliver. That one's fought off as well. 0-2 remains the count. Wide up and the pitch. That one low. Cut by Jouette. One nothing lead now for Braintree. Up the third base side, that'll get by the dive of the shortstop Jackson Hornung and it is going to be a two out single. Joe Vanelli, the first baseman, will step into the batter's box. Babineau will make sure he keeps that runner close. Runner leading off of first. There's a strike. Seems to be going for the outside corner, whether on a righty or lefty. Set to deliver. Nasty breaking ball there, 0-2. Pitch slightly outside. Good hold by Jewett, giving the umpire that extra second to raise his right arm. Babineau looks at first and deals. Swinging strike, and that'll do it for the top half of the third. 
But Braintree does play to run and leads one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the inning. Bottom of the third inning, Ronan Bates set to step in. Jake Ovid grounded out to and the bottom half of the second. A one nothing deficit now for post 77. Two, three, and four do up. Ronan Bates, Jackson Horning, and Ben Thomas. To face John Teller. He was given up three hits, yet no runs so far tonight. Teller's up to 32 pitches. Babineau, 53. There's a strike. There's been a lot of battles tonight for Babineau. Teller deals. That one is behind Bates. One and one. I think he looks like the reincarnation of a right-handed Tommy John. Just picking his spots, not overpowering. This is up the third base side, picked up by the third baseman. Throw across, no problem for Nolan Freeman. One away. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, to step in. Morning, a 321 batting average on the season, 413 on base percentage. 16 runs scored, 10 driven in. That one outside, 1 0. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle, slow roller picked up by the shortstop, throw across, and there's out number two. Jackson going hard all the way down the line. Ben Thomas will step in. Post 77 could certainly use some offensive momentum. But Braintree showing that they are a very sound defensively team. From what I understand, Braintree would have to face Milford tomorrow regardless, because you cannot play two opponents ah. in the tournament. So it would be a Ashland-Shrewsbury matchup. Certainly be a very good matchup tomorrow then. Line up and the pitch. There's a called strike. Of course, if you win here, you're guaranteed to advance to the state championship game. So you will be in that championship final game. Three and one on the cleanup man. Teller deals, that's fouled off. That would be a shocking surprise if Ashland made it into the championship game, given their track record of never appearing in a state tournament. Well, with the way they have played here at Fino, I certainly uh, don't put anything past them. They have shown that they are very capable of advancing to that point as Thomas draws the walk. Zach Peston will step in. Thomas has got good speed over there, as you know. Thomas has reached both times tonight with a single and now a walk. And te te Tellier doesn't have a, a great move. He may throw over there just to say, hey, hey, I'm here, but. There's a strike. Coach Johnson would love to get Ben Thomas in scoring position. Two down. Teller looks over at first and now is set to deliver. Up the third base side, right up the line it goes. That's a fair ball. Ben Thomas around second base, heading to third, picked up by the left fielder. Throw in is going to get by the third baseman, and it is going to be a two-out double for Zach Pesson. Has he been hitting the ball or what? Good piece of hitting there. And now let's see if Lewis Rossi could take it advantage 
of two in scoring position. He could play two with a base hit here. Rossi is hitting a 325 overall, 442 on base percentage. 13 driven in, six runs scored. Line up and the pitch. That is fouled off. Oh, Tom, can I ask you a quick question here? Is that fog out in center field? It appears to be, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, some fog out there. We'll see how that uh, impacts this game throughout the course of the night. Nothing like the Boston Garden, Edmonton Oilers, Boston Bruins game. That one is low. One and one. Fog wants to hang around in center field, not bother the right field and not bother the left field. Just hang in there. Set to deliver. Upstairs. Tom Anzi on deck. Both runners leading off slightly. Teller set to deal. That one is outside. Seventy sevens bench is urging Rossi on. Teller from the stretch. Called strike there. That'll fill up the count on Rossi. Wind up and the pitch. Up high, he draws ball four and the walk. Bases loaded, two outs. Tom Onsey to the plate. Onsey did reach his last time up with a single. And before Onsey steps in, we'll get a conference on the mound. And it's been a pretty sound game for Teller, but now starting to have a couple battles with these post-77 hitters. Might be bullpen gut by committee with brain, brain, brain treat tonight, I'm sorry. Getting a little cold up here in the booth. Now the umpire will head out to break up the conference with Cam Fox and his pitcher, John Teller. Coach Johnson having a little conversation with Doug Onzi. A lot of post-59 players from Milford here to scout the game. Yeah, getting a nice glimpse of their next opponent. They got a nice win over Northampton today. Nine to four final down the first base side, picked up by the first baseman. He runs it over, steps on the bag, and despite loading the bases up, no run score. We will head to the top of the fourth. Braintree leading Ashland one to nothing. Top of the fourth inning. Babineau out there for another inning of work. Very similar uh, pitch count for Sean Babineau and John Teller. Babineau up to 53. John Teller after the last half inning up to 52. Five, six, and seven do up. For Braintree, Cole Flannery, the left fielder, to start things off. Babino deals. Ashland uh, infield doesn't do much shifting at all. Shifting right or shifting left, depending on which side of the plate the batter's on. Hit in the air, high in the air to center field. And having a battle with the lights is Seymour, but he makes the catch one away. Steve Burns, the second baseman, has stepped in. One of the concerns coming into this tournament is Ashland had not played a lot of games under the lights. So they can be a factor sometimes. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike. Yeah, there's a few locations in zone five that do play at night. 
besides that, mostly uh, evening games with no lights for post 77. And that one is going to drop in the right center. Seymour thought that it was further back. And speaking of troubles playing under the lights, there you go. Perfect example right there, Larry. Yeah, I think he lost that in the lights. He looked like he was camped under it. Burns is now over at second base. And you could put him down for a double. Nolan Freeman to step in. Runner leading off of second. That one is outside. Briefly got away from Jouette. No advancement by the runner. Well, I don't know if you could have... Uh, Cue that any more perfect, Larry. Well, that's why you call me Nostradamus during the regular <laughs> season, right? Babino looks at second and deals. There's a called strike. He wants to get in and out. One nothing lead for Braintree already. They have a runner in scores position with one out. That one is going to get by Jouette. The runner will advance the third easily. bit wild on that one, uncharacteristically by Babineau. That was a swing oh. by the hitter, so. Oh, it was a strikeout. So I'm going to give that a pass ball then, in that case. Must have just dropped in the dirt right in front of Jouette. Didn't close the five hole up. Pitch was a bit outside as well. Hit in the air, high in the air towards Seymour, battling the lights once again, called off, and it is handled. No, by it is. It is. Or was it handled? No. Did they call it infield fly? And that is going to allow a run to score. An error in the outfield. It could have been called an infield fly, Tom. Adams reaches and has the RBI. And Ben Thomas came in from right field, called off Seymour. And then it was. Uh, He's going to appeal the second base? Apparently. No. He's going to walk that one off. Right up and the pitch to infield Duffy, that's fly. fouled off. Is that an infield fly? Line up and the pitch. Inside. Babineau was set up for a quick inning, but a couple of miscues, plates a run. One and one. Up the middle, takes a hop on the grass, over to the shortstop, throw to second. They get the final out, but not before. Braintree plates another run. It is two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the four. John Jouette steps in to start off the bottom of the fourth inning. And there is a strike. Oh, and one. So wild sequence of events last inning. Nolan Freeman reached on the strikeout. Justin Adams then flew out to uh, right field. And then the ball was dropped after the catch. And the runner was able to advance... Uh, and score a run for Braintree with Steve Burns who was able to score the run. And then Duffy th flew out to center. As this is hit in the air to right field, that'll drop down for a base hit. Well, Lead off single game, for Sean Jouette. I hope tonight's game, Tom, is not as crazy as last night's game. Well, we huh? saw absolutely everything. Bit of a crazy start right now, that's for sure. Now the fog is spread over. 
to left field. Brad Seymour will step in. The bottom of the lineup has been very good for post 77 during the state tournament. Well, they're playing as if he may lay down a bunt. The third baseman is in on the grass. Line up and the pitch. That right is back popped there. up behind the backstop. It goes out of play. Oh, and one to Seymour. Teller set to deal. And Seymour puts this one on the ground. Left side picked up by the shortstop. Throw to second for one to first. Double play, 6-4-3. Speedy Seymour. That was a tough turn. Braintree was able to do it. Lead off hitter Jake Obed. Jake Obed steps in. Line up and the pitch. Strike one. Still plenty of time for Ashland. It's a nine inning game in the state tournament. Certainly is. That one inside, one and one. Teller set to deal. Leg lift and the pitch. Inside, two and one. He deals. Outside, three and one now. I hope our cameraman won't get fogged out. Fog seems to be creeping in towards the infield. Swinging strike there. That'll fill up the count on Obid. Jake's a very emotional player. He was not happy with that swing. That one's fought off. Teller set to deal. And that one hits Ovid. He takes one for the team there. He'll head over to first base. One on, two outs. Ronan Bates to step in. Now he's being called back. And no, they change it to strike three. They're going to say, I'm not sure what the call was there. I thought it hit him. Oh, he might get tossed. Well, he certainly uh, needs to calm down because they really need Obid for this game. But the call changed for strike three. Another game, more weird things happening here at the state tournament. We will head over to the top of the fifth. Two-nothing, Braintree leading Ashland. Fifth inning, top of the order for Braintree. Billy Silly will step in to face Sean Babineau. Two nothing lead for Braintree. And they would like to try to add on here. Did you get the explanation on that strikeout by Obid? I did. They're saying he leaned into the strike zone and tried to get hit intentionally. And we'll have to look at the tape for that one. Another crazy night at Fino Field. That's right. That one outside. One and one on Sylvia. But Obid's going to need to keep his cool in this game. You're trailing by two, and you need all the offense you can get. Still a long way to go. The umpire looked like he was going to go after Obid, but Coach Johnson cut him off. And there's a strikeout. Check swing for Sylvia, couldn't hold, one away. Kind of a feeble attempt at that one. Four strikeouts in the books for Babineau, as Alex Kennedy, the catcher, will step in. Oh, 
Outside, 1-0. and In and out, in and out. That's how Sean Babineau works. Up, down. That one outside as well. Two and O oh on Kennedy. Fouled away. Healthy hack at that one. Two and one on the catcher. This is hit in the air and that'll drop to shallow left field but not before Jake Obed makes a nice dive at it and comes up with the catch. That he likes was payback. impressive. <laughs> he likes payback, as he got last night. Well, he got some there. That's a candidate for defensive play of the game, no doubt. Sean Casey steps in. That may be a momentum shifter there, right, right there. Very well could be. There's a strike, 0-1. Babineau picked up Jake Obid last night during that runner's interference call. He was key. And now Jake Obid may be picking up Sean Babineau. Yep, getting each other's backs there. That one's fouled into the backstop. 0-2. I think it's only a matter of time before Ashland breaks it open. I just get this sixth sense about it. Babineau deals. Strike three, got Casey looking. Post 77 starting to get a little bit louder as they head towards the team dugout. And we will head to the bottom of the fifth. Post 77 coming up, trailing two to nothing. Bottom of the fifth inning, two, three, and four due up for post 77. Ronan Bates, Jackson Horning, and Ben Thomas. Comes after Sean Babineau had a nice short inning. A well needed short inning. They are certainly going to have to get as much out of Babineau as they can in this one. That one outside, 1 0 on Bates. And I'll keep saying it Ronan needs a hit like oxygen. I'll keep saying it till he gets a, puts in a charge in a one. Another outside pitch, 2 and 0. And let's not forget John Teller. He's thrown a good amount of pitches so far in this one as well. There's a called strike, two and one. He deals, fouled off. Catcher will set up on the outside corner, I venture to guess, with Ronan. Probably swinging a 33-inch bat. Time called by Bates. Let's see where the catcher sets up. Outside. There's a the ball. Full count now. That was pretty close. Catcher is really helping Teller, Tellier along. Bates takes a crack at this one. It gets by the pitcher, slow roller. He's going to beat it out, and he breaks the slump with a well-needed base hit. Jackson Horning to step in. Partner in crime. Inning starting single for Bates. Is it the first leadoff hitter they've had on all day? Nope. Oh, they had Obed Thomas. on to start the game in the bottom of the first. Okay. Runner taking off from first, and he will go back. I don't know if you want to be too aggressive on the base paths yet. Try to get that first run. Checking at first, Bates slides back. Especially with one on, no outs. Teller set the deal. 
called strike. Tell you is hitting that outside corner, I'll tell you. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike, one and two. It's almost like he's got a tunnel from his arm to the outside corner. Runner leading off of first, tell you set the deal. Outside, and that looked intentional to see if the runner would take off. Two and two. Kennedy popped up like he was going to back pick Ronan. Checking once again, Bates dives back. Post 77 can just adjust. They know that pitch is going to be outside. Horning hits this one high in the air, right side, followed territory. The first baseman makes the catch. Bates back to the bag. One on, one out. I'll bring up Ben Thomas. He's reached both times. He has hit so far on a single in the first and a walk in the third. And post 77 would love him to reach here. I don't know, post 77 has been aggressive on the bases all year long. Thomas is going to send this one slow up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, who made a great throw over, but Thomas is called safe, beats it out, shows off that speed up the line. Two on, one out. A single for Thomas, that's two infield singles in this inning for post 77, and now Zach Pesson will step in. The Holliston High senior. To be, pardon me. Both runners leading off. Teller gives a long look at second and deals. Swinging strike. He had a base hit in this game down the third baseline. Fog starting to creep in once again towards center field. And that one is off of Pesson, and he will head over to first base. He just stood right in the batter's box, didn't move at all, and took that one for the team. Bases loaded, one out. He didn't stick his wing over the strike zone. Right. <laughs> and that's the important thing there. Lewis Rossi will step in. Now this is a little unusual. Corners are in. They're expecting maybe a bunt attempt here. Well, Lewis will known away to right do that. Now. And Rossi will swing away and hit that one foul, 0 and 1. Tellier's racking up some pitches this inning. Certainly is. Teller deals, the bunt pulled back. Runner is going to try to score and he's tagged out by the catcher. Did not like that move at all. You got bases loaded, one out, and now it's two on with two outs. You might have just blown a rally. Well, some coaches. Suicide squeeze was on there, but Rossi could not get the bunt down and Bates was just too fast down the line. Some coaches no really like back. that play, the suicide squeeze play. It's like daylight play there. Thomas safe at second as he slides back. So some coaches like the double steal. Coach Johnson likes to do that. And sometimes they have this ego thing where they want to get a suicide squeeze laid down. Now this is a team that doesn't make errors and is a very good defensive team. So a lot of this trickery won't work with a team like Braintree. Two and one, the check-in at second, runner slides back safe. Tellier's got a good spin move off the back of the rubber. It's twice he's gone back there. He's got a speedy Ben Thomas to deal with. 
Rossi right falls here. that one away, yeah. two and two. Heads up, Tom. Looks at second and deals outside. Full count. Nick Rossi struck out his last time up. Well, runners will be going on leg lift here. Teller deals up high. That would have been a run, but Bates was tagged out heading home. But it is bases loaded, two outs. That'll bring up Tom Otzi. He was up once already with the bases loaded, was he not, Tom? He was, and he grounded out. There's nice. a strike. Nice breaking pitch. It was back in the third. That was a show me, show me curveball. Wind up and the pitch. And also he gets a piece of this. That's a fair ball down the third baseline. Did he tag the runner? And no, he didn't. Pesson back to the bag. And he is safe. That is a post-77 run as Ben Thomas scores. It's two to one. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff at this Fino field. An RBI single that turns into for Ansi. Pesson to third, Rossi to second. <laughs> and Sean Jewett to step in. <laughs> wow. The dirt dog, Sean Jewett. What a sequence that was. We'll follow that one away. Have we seen craziness in the last two nights? Oh, we certainly have. A busted suicide squeeze. An overrun of the bag by Pesson. Scrambles back to the bag. Well, this inning has had its fair share of action, to say the least. <laughs> Looks like there will be some warm-up action for Braintree as well. That pitch outside. It may be bullpen by committee for them. Line up in the pitch to Juet. He hits this into center field, and it is caught for the final out of the inning. Post 77 does get one back. It is two to one as we head to the sixth. Top of the sixth inning, four, five, and six do up for Braintree. Joe Vanelli steps in, the first baseman. Sean Babineau back out there for another inning of work. And he is hoping for another short one, two, three inning as he had in the fifth. Strike one there to the first baseman. Temperature has dropped a couple of, de couple of de degrees since game time, down to 58 degrees with fog rolling in again. Feels like uh, football season right now. That one's fouled away, 0-2 remains the count. Uh, very different temperatures from what it was during Ashland's first game on Saturday as this is lined a short but caught. No problem for Hornung. He ranges to his left, makes the catch, one away. Cole Flannery, the left fielder, to step in. Abano deals, there's a strike. Well, post 77 certainly had an interesting inning in the bottom of the fifth. That went upstairs. Bates started off with a single and then Horning flew out. Ben Thomas came up, hit a single. Up the middle, slow roller picked up by Babino. He turns, throws the first, no problem. Makes it look easy, two away. Steve Burns, the second baseman, to step in. And then after Thomas singled, Zach Pesson hit by a pitch. And then uh, Louis Rossi was also able to reach after being hit. Otzi with an RBI single to score Thomas, but before that, Bates thrown out on an attempted suicide squeeze. The post 77 was able to get one back. One and O to Burns. That's fouled away. Is 
if this comes down to a one-run game, I think Coach Johnson might uh, feel a little bit haunted while he's in bed tonight. Up the middle, picked up by the shortstop. Horning throws the first, no problem. Six to three goes Burns, and it's another one, two, three inning. In the top half of the six to the bottom of the inning we go. Braintree two, Ashland one. It is State Tournament Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM Television. Bottom of the six, nine, one, and two do up. Brad Seymour, Jake Obit, and Ronan Bates. Braintree leading two to one. John Teller out there for another inning of work. Pitch count up to 89. Sean Babineau was up at 86. But of course, Babineau has worked six innings. And Teller is entering his sixth inning of work on the mound. That pitch outside, 1 and 0 oh, to Seymour, who's 0 oh for 2 tonight. Still working that outside corner. And works it a little bit too outside there, 2 and 0. Oh. Seymour gets on. I have a feeling Johnson's going to let him loose. He's got a lot of speed. There's a called strike. I would crowd the plate on this kid. He's going for the outside corner. And this is hit in the air, a shallow pop up towards shallow right field handled by the second baseman, one away. Jake Obid will step in. Obid is 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. Made a great defensive play out in left field. And he will get a piece of this, but it's right to the first baseman, two away. Ronan Bates to step in. This is what Tellier needed, a quick inning. It certainly is. Sean Babineau is 36 pitches away, 37 pitches away from his cutoff. There's a strike. Like to keep Tellier out there a little bit longer, push him out of the game. Wind up and the pitch, and this is up the middle, picked up by Tellier, and he will flip to first, no problem. One to three goes Bates, one, two, three goes post 77, and we will head to the top of the seventh, Braintree leading two to one. Top of the seventh inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for Braintree. Sean Babineau battling through to the seventh, hoping for another quick inning. That one sent foul by Freeman, 0 and 1. I'm having a difficult time seeing Brad Seymour out in center field. He's sort of lost in the fog. Yeah, good amount of fog out there now. There's a strike. And it, it's certainly been some interesting weather throughout the course of the week. On Saturday, it was in the high 80s, and now we're down to the high 50s. A strike out there. <laughs> I wonder whether the hitters are uh, having a little tough time seeing the ball coming out of that fog. Justin Adams steps in. As this is... Hit in the air towards shallow right field into foul territory it goes and will drop just in front of Pesson who ended up coming to a dive. I think he lost it in the lights. No harm, however, as it was in foul territory. Michael Velsenti is warming up for Braintree. <laughs> Can you see uh, Brad Seymour in center now? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I just see his shirt. The 1 and Got a called that is strike. going to be a called strike, 0-2. Adams could not hold the swing. That's okay by me, though. Yep. Upstairs, 1-2. and two. Number 9 hitter Jackson on deck. 
And there is strikeout number seven for Babineau. <laughs> Jackson Duffy will step in. I feel like Babineau is getting better as this game goes on. Down the first base side, and that is past Pest and took an awkward hop. It like will I, be a two-out single for Duffy. Like I told you earlier, this infield is haunted. Crazy hops. Billy Sylvia will step in. Well, I guess the good thing about that, it was only uh, one pitch to Duffy. Sylvia 0 for 2 with a walk on the day. Runner leading off, Babino deals up high. He really only had one stressful inning, ba Sean Babino. Checking at first, runner back safe. Runner taking off from first. Juet will throw to second. The throw right on the money, but just a tad late. A stolen base for Duffy. That throw, though, that was perfection. Just if he got it off a millisecond sooner. Line up in the pitch. Strike through. Called there, two and one. You were ready to bring him up, weren't you? I was. <laughs> I was hoping that was strike three, but I'm a couple off. A couple more to go. There's strike two. Got a curveball, beautiful curveball on the outside corner. It's the first one he's thrown really tonight. Babino attempting to strike out the side here. Up high, full count. Looks at second and deals. Fouled off. The fog continuing to worsen out in center and now left field. I don't know, it's maybe allergic to Ben Thomas out and right. And this is up the middle past the dive of Bates and that is going to allow a run to score. 3-1 Braintree as Jackson Duffy comes around from second base on the RBI single by Sylvia. That error by Pesson really hurts now. I'll we'll bring up Alex Kennedy. Babino looks over at first and deals. This is hit high in the air over to the third base side. Rossi makes the catch for the third and final out of the top of the seventh. But Braintree does net another run. It is three to one as we head to the bottom of the inning. Bottom of the seventh inning, three, four, and five due up for post 77. Jackson Horning, Ben Thomas, Zach Pesson. John Tellier out there for another inning of work. And this Braintree post 86 has a three to one lead. As we enter the bottom of this inning, post 77 is going to need to get those bats going, but there has been some extended warm-up action in the Braintree bullpen, so. I think if Tellier runs into any trouble at all, we'll likely see a relief pitcher. And now we'll have a little bit of warm-up action for post-77 as well as Dylan O'Leary will head over there. And Sean Babineau has been on a pitch count all season long due to another uh, organization he's pitching with this summer. But we'll see if that's the case this game. I don't believe it is. I believe he wants to stay out there. They're going to ride him to 120. I think so. Or if in the case of last night, if he's in the middle of a hitter when he 
Hits 120, they'll let him go. That one outside. Two and one on Horning. You know, I might think about, I don't know what the rules are, how many pitches are a minimum we need to rest, but you always got Tom Onzi there. Three and one pitch. Called strike. Been getting that corner all night long. Yeah, I don't think they're going to Onsi tonight, though. They're going to save him for tomorrow's game. And this is ripped up the left side, but right to the shortstop. Throw to first, no problem. Six to three goes Hornung, and Ben Thomas will step in. I was speaking to some of your colleagues on the other side of the press box. They've never seen fog at Fino Field. I said, it must be that Ashland's here. They've never <laughs> made it to the state tournament, so why not have fog? Expect the unexpected in the Legion Baseball State Tournament. Tellier gets the sign he likes and deals. There's a called strike. Maybe it's his delivery that causes him to throw everything on the inside to a lefty, like that one, and outside to a righty. Maybe it's just his arm slot. Well, he's pitching a very good game so far, that's for sure. Leg lift and the pitch. That is outside, two and one. Now the right fielder is a little obscured by some fog. Three and one. Well, this is a good part of the lineup for post 77 to uh, do some damage. Called strike, full count. Tell your deals, fouled off. Thomas and then Pesson do up. Full count pitch to Thomas. That one's fought off as well. Good battle here. As we've seen most of the year, Ben Thomas likes to hit the gap with his speed. In that fog, he may get three bags. Line up and the pitch. Breaking ball up high. Ben Thomas draws the one-out walk. Zach Pesson will step in. I would love to see one of these post-77 hitters hit the ball right into the fog. Is Telly going to get the yank? Uh, could either, could be a, just a discussion, but let's see. He, his pitch count is up there. Keep, keep Ben Thomas close. Don't let him swipe a bag. And right now it appears to be just a discussion. So I think he is going to stay out there for now. But any more trouble, I don't know uh, if he'll be out there. Bullpen's still working. Yep. I think they're. I think pretty much uh, coach probably seeing if he's good to throw to another hitter. But if Pesson reaches, more than likely he's coming out. Is the umpire heading to the mound to break up the conference? It's amazing how quickly they break up when they see the man in blue. Yeah, he gave him a good amount of time there, I think. Yeah, let that bullpen get ready. Take as much time as you can. This catcher's got a good arm. Will Coach Johnson take a risk and send Thomas? Pitch to Pesson up high. Winner of this game, really in the driver's seat of the state tournament, will be 3-0 and and still have to lose two. Up the third base side and foul. Counts 1-1. 
Tell you from the stretch, set to deliver the 1-1 one -one to Pesson. Called strike there. Paint, as Dennis Eccleside would say, paint. Thomas taking a slight lead at first. The one, two, and that's going to hit him. Third two hit. on, oh. one out. And I think this is going to be the hook for Tellier. Captain Hook comes out and, was that Sparky Anderson? They call him Captain Hook? Yeah. So we are going to get a relief pitcher here, but you have to give John Tellier credit. What a game he pitched against this potent post-77 lineup. But hold on, did he take the ball? I don't know if he fit. There he goes, the handshake. Good game. There and the relief pitcher will come out. We'll take a timeout. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV in Ashland or HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Continuing on with the bottom of the seventh, Jack Collins, the new pitcher. For Braintree post 86. And he will face a one out situation with two on. Lewis Rossi steps in. Both runners leading. Collins deals. There's a strike. Braintree has made most of the men on base um, score. But Ashland has left a lot of men on base. Line up and the pitch. That is fouled off third base side. That's why the score is three to one. Braintree has made the most of their opportunities. While Ashland has yet to. Oh, and two now to Rossi. Collins deals. Check swing. Did he hold? Yes, he did. One and two. You should have asked me, the umpire, right? Saw it as a clear check. The one, two. Leg lift and the pitch outside. Two and two. Yanked that way outside. Collins deals. Breaking pitch outside. Full count. Would Coach Johnson put a double steal on right now? I would not if I was him, but he's an unconventional we know, uh, guy. Coach Johnson loves the base path trickery, so. I think, a I think you gotta be a little bit conservative against this team. They're too good defensively. And there's strike three, two away. Tom Onsey will step in. And he painted the outside corner with that breaking ball. Collins deals. Onsey gets a piece, foul ball. Oh, and one. Post 77, trailing three to one for those of you just joining us. Legion Baseball State Tournament action, that pitch outside. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan on camera. It's a three to one ball game that has been filled with excitement for sure. But the Ashland Bats have not been as potent as the first two nights of the state tournament so far. Wind up and the pitch. High and outside. Two and one. Sean Jewett waiting for his chance to get in the box. Should Onzi reach? Pitch to Onzi. Outside, three and one. Two on, two outs. Will he take a strike here or let it rip? And that is going to get away from the catcher. 
Both runners will move up, but it will not matter as it is a walk anyway. Bases loaded, two outs. And you got Sean Jouette to the plate. Jouette singled earlier on in the game. Jouette had a 263 overall, 391 on base percentage. Take strike one. Well, I don't think uh, Collins is going to leave too many pitches in questions in this uh, pitches in question in this situation. Well, one. walks as good as a hit right now. Right. Runners will be going on contact, so anything that's through will score two. Time called by Jewett. Jewett steps back into the batter's box and awaits the pitch. Gets a piece of that, but fouled into the backstop. One and two. It's almost a 100% guarantee if he gets a hit, they'll play two. Matt, uh, Pesson has got a monstrous lead out there. Collins deals. And he gets a piece of this one down the third base side. Foul. Count remains one and two. And I guarantee you if Dewey gets a hit, that Ashland bench will erupt. That certainly will. He's got right up the middle. I mean, there's got to be 90 feet between the second baseman and the shortstop or more. He's got the whole middle to hit. Into the backstop. Quite a battle. Jouette was just barely able to get a piece of that last pitch to stay alive. The one, two. Swinging strike, he got him. And that is going to wrap up the seventh. To the top of the eighth we go. It's a 3-1 Braintree lead on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the eighth inning, a 3-1 lead for Braintree. They're going to try to add on. 3-4 and 5 due up. Sean Babineau back on the hill for post 77. But he's at 102 pitches. Sean Casey, Joe Vanelli, Cole Flannery will be the hitters this inning. Post 77 left the bases loaded last inning for the second time tonight. It's fouled out of play. I actually make that the third time tonight that they left the bases loaded. Swinging strike there. Oh, and two. What number hitters do we have here? Wind up in the pitch to the DH. Above the second baseman's head it goes, and Sean Casey is aboard with a leadoff single. It'll bring up the cleanup man, Joe Vanelli. They haven't hit Sean Babineau hard all night. Well, it is the eighth inning, and maybe Babineau getting a little bit tired out there. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. He deals. Up the middle, slow roller, picked up by the shortstop, and the throw to second. They get the force out. The way he was charging that ball, I didn't think he was going to flip to second. Nice but he made sort of an awkward throw over there, and... He's able to get the out. That's all that matters. Yeah, nice job by Horning. Cole Flannery will step in. Fights that one off, 0 and 1. He deals. There's a strike. 0-2. Oh From 
down the stretch. Just high. One and two. One out, one on. Time called. Late time called. Babineau may take that. Take uh, it out on the runner at first base and pick over. And this is hit in the air. That's going to drop into center field. And it is going to be a one out single for Flannery. Vanelli moves up to second. That'll bring up Steve Burns, the second baseman. But before that, Sean Jewett's going to have a conversation with Babineau. Well, Pesson will probably be, be will he be holding the runner on or playing behind the runner? You can get an out without throwing a pitch. Babineau deals. There's a strike. Pesson was right behind the runner at first. That went up high. Babineau deals outside. Two and one. He's got to be getting awful close to that 120. I'm told 114, 115. Two and two. If he can get this hitter out, he can work to the next one. Looks at second and deals. Up the third base side, slow roller, picked up by Ross. He steps on the third base bag and gets the force out. Oh, Babineau will have at least one hitter to face before he gets pulled. Two away, Nolan Freeman to step in. Runners on first and second. Coach Johnson going to visit with Babineau first. Is he going to pull him and just have a new pitcher for this next hitter? I'd want the new pitcher to have a clean inning if possible. Yeah, I wouldn't take the ball right now. You gotta leave him out there. And just some words of encouragement. Babino will indeed stay out there to face Nolan Freeman. Freeman is over three today, reached on a force out in the second. He also actually reached after striking out, which led to the second run of the game for Braintree. So that one's fouled off 0-1. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. He's at 119 pitches. Can he get out of the inning? And that is low. Gets by Jouet briefly, but no harm done. Both runners stay put. And I believe he could stay in to finish the batter, so... That's, of course, what they'll uh, allow him to do. Two nights in a row, they're going to go over the limit. Breaking pitch called a ball. Pretty good breaking pitch, too. Two and two. Obed, 124. Babineau's at 122. There's strike three. He gets out of the inning. It is three to one. Braintree leading post-77 coming up. Can we see some late inning miracles? Find out next as lead, the American Legion Baseball Massachusetts State Tournament continues on WACA TV and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Brad Seymour stepping to the plate. 9 1 and 2 due up for post 77. Seymour, Obed, and Bates. Jack Collins out there to. 
continue his work on the mound after pitching two thirds of last inning. In relief for the starter, John Teller, who had a great performance today. Teller went seven and a third, gave up one run, five hits, and had four strikeouts. There's strike one to Seymour, who is struggling today, 0 for 3. Well, Sean Babineau won 121 pitches, and there was only really one ball hit hard off of him. And this is hit in the air over to right center. This could be trouble, but no, the center fielder is going to get there in time. Jackson Duffy showing off the wheels to make the catch, one away. Jake Obed will step in. That one hard hit was through the infield. Pass Pesson. So hats off to Sean Babineau for an outstanding performance. There's a strike. For the last inning, Tom, would you use Tom Onzi? No. 20 pitches or something? Nope. You okay. need him to start tomorrow. Well, if he was able to throw 20 and still go tomorrow, would you do it? No. Okay. I'd let if him start fresh <laughs> tomorrow. Is that his win or go home? He needs to be at his best. Up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first. There it is. And with the way these bats are going, you know, it's not looking good as Ronan Bates will step in. Jack Collins, when he came into the game, uh, someone yelled to the mound, Jackie strikeout. And he's been the very consistent closer all season for this post-86 team. There's a called strike to Bates. I was talking to Steve Simos today. He reminded me of something he told me three years ago, that every team has to have a little crafty little lefty. And this is to short, throw to first, not a problem. A one, two, three, eighth. Post 77 will be down to their final three outs, but first Braintree will get another at bat as we head to the top of the ninth. Braintree three, Ashland one. It is a Legion Baseball State Tournament coverage on WACA TV and HCAM TV. Top of the ninth inning. Eight, nine, and one do up for Braintree. Justin Adams, Jackson Duffy, and Billy Sylvia to face the new pitcher. For post 77, Tom Onsey, who comes into the game for Sean Babineau. Babineau pitched a very good game through eight innings, giving up seven hits, three runs, two of which were earned. As Onsey is set to deliver to Adams. I now, think I asked you a question outside, last inning. one and oh. <laughs> what? I think I asked you a question last inning. Uh, would they bring in Tom Onsey? You did. You did. I didn't think they would. I I'm think not in agreement with the decision, but yeah, well, they did it. But, hey, I'm not the coach. He's He's got 20 pitches, I think, they've told me, on the other side of the press box before he's got to come out. But then I guess the question is, who do you have faith in coming out of the, coming out in relief? I mean, clearly, Onsi they have faith in. He's been very good all season long. But there's not a lot of guys that you'd like to bring out there as far as pitching. That one Ting, upstairs. Tim Ringe available? Well, I think they're saving the majority of guys for tomorrow as well because that is a must-win game. It'll be post-77, more than likely taking on Shrewsbury for the 4.30 o'clock, uh, for the 4.30 game. And Shrewsbury's going to have to do it by committee tomorrow. It's a lead-off walk to Adams. And now Jackson Duffy will step in. Maybe we get Sean Babineau to put on another uniform number and sneak him out there. And that's going to hit the batter. Not a good start to the ninth. That one stung. Two on, no outs. Billy Sylvia stepping in. Tom usually needs some time to get settled in. Skies are clear though, 58 degrees. 
Both runners leading. The bunt is fouled away. And I guess tomorrow we'll see if it's a good idea to bring in your starter in relief for an inning. The Little League rules say 20 pitches. You don't have to take a day of rest. Wind up in the pitch. Slow roller up the middle, the throw to third, and he got one. So get he gets the, lead, the force man. out. One to five force out will allow Sylvie to reach. Duffy up to second. One away with two on. Alex Kennedy, the catcher, to the plate. So I don't know whether the hard stop is 20 and you can pitch tomorrow or whether you can, if you hit 20, you can finish the batter. I'm not sure what the rules are down here. Aussie deals. This is hit high in the air and out of play. Oh, and one. Oh. One in a no man's land. Good hustle by Sean Jewett, going as far as he could go for that ball. Wind up in the pitch. This is hit into left field. That's going to drop down. Lead runner being waved around. He will score easily. And the runner behind him stopped at third. It's a four to one ball game. Kennedy advanced to second on the throw in, an RBI single, adds some insurance for Braintree. Sean Casey will step to the plate. And we'll get a conference on the mound here. Is he the cleanup hitter, Casey? Third hitter in the lineup. They're not going to give him the four-fingered salute to put him in a force situation. Some action down in the bullpen. Lancy set to deal. Fouled away. Wind up and the pitch to Casey. Outside it goes, gets away from Jouette. Another run's going to score. 5 1, Braintree. Really, Sylvia comes around on the wild pitch. And now another run's going to try to score. Otzi charges in and tags him out. Jewett did not call time. Well, I guess that situation ended the best it could have. Two away. Kennedy tagged Didn't out. Didn't have to th throw a pitch to get that out. Right. That was well needed to say the least. Nevertheless, Ashland finds himself four behind. There's a strike. One and two. Ansi deals, breaking pitch up high. Like I said before, Tom Ansi needs some time to get in his groove. Well, certainly not a pitcher you want to have out there in relief then. That one outside. And there, strike three gets out of the inning, but Braintree adds another pair. It is five to one as we head to the bottom of the ninth, post 77 down to their final three outs. Bottom of the ninth, post 77 down to their final three outs, trailing five to one. Three, four, and five do up Jackson Horning, Ben Thomas, and Zach Pesson. 
to face Jack Collins, who has been very good in relief and is in line for the save. Fog has seemed to calm down. Wind up in the pitch, outside. Some well needed insurance by Braintree in the top of the inning as they added a pair. Collins deals, there's a called strike. Jackson reaches first base, you'll hear the Ashland dugout wake up. Another strike there. Jackson didn't like it. He's taking a little walk. Gotta forget that pitch. Well, post 77 has left 13 runners on base today. Mm. That certainly does not help. Line up and the pitch. That's fouled away. One and two remains the count. Jackson's in defense mode. Collins deals inside. It hit him. Did that hit him? Nope. Says the umpire. Two and two. Coach Johnson wants an explanation. Yeah, Horning says that hit me. And the umpire does not agree. Jackson waves off Coach Johnson. Collins deals. Check swing, did he hold? Yes. Braintree Full fans count. really don't like that. I thought he held. I thought he checked. Yep. Braintree Just fans barely, disagree though. It was him. close. Full count pitch. And strike three's called. I disagree with that one. That was outside. Born away. Jackson Hornung disagrees with the man in blue. Well, the calls aren't going your way tonight, that's for sure. Can't change the call. There's some howling in the dugout right now. There's been a few close ones, but that one was way outside. 1-0. and oh. Breaking ball inside. 2-0. and oh. Pitch to Thomas. There's strike one. Ben Thomas having a good day at the plate. Two for two and a pair of walks and scored a run. Scored the only run today for post 77. Full count now, three, or excuse me, three and one now. A three one pitch. And there's ball four, one out walk. Well, there won't be any base stealing here. It's got to be station to station. First baseman, number 19, Zach Pesson. Zach Pesson will step in. Third baseman playing off the line. First baseman holding Thomas on. That is up high. No bullpen activity for Braintree. Runner leading off of first. Hit in the air, high in the air to left field and arranging over to make the catch is Flannery two away. Cole Flannery gets under it. Lewis Rossi will step in. Post 77 down, their final out. One out away from losing the first game of this year's state tournament. That is going to be wild to get away from the catcher. Ben Thomas will advance to second. Score stays the same here. We'll be looking at a Shrewsbury Ashland matchup tomorrow. The 
Yep, and an elimination game as well. Loser of that game goes home. Winner advances on. On the ground, right side, picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first, and that's going to do it. Here's the final out of the game. Braintree defeats post 77 by a final score of 5 to 1. Braintree scores five runs on nine hits and commits one error, while post 77 scores one run on 11 hits, leaves 13 runners on. That was the killer right there. And commits two errors. The winning pitcher is John Tellier. The losing pitcher, Sean Babineau. The save goes to Jack Collins. Braintree improves to 3 and 0 in the state tournament and moves on to the winner's bracket. They will battle Milford more than likely tomorrow night at 7.30. Ashland is set to take on Shrewsbury at 4.30 right here at Fino Field. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching coverage of Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or H Camp Television in Hopkinton. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your night, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.